Hi, I'm Chris and welcome to the official HC Media Sony EX-1 camera video tutorial. Today I'm going to be going over the Sony EX-1 video camera, kind of giving you like a crash course in it. Uh, this is not intended to make you an expert, however I will familiarize you with some of the uh, buttons, uh, the location of those buttons, what their functions are, how to uh, basically turn the camera on, get it rolling, insert a memory card, etc. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is basically get power to your camera because uh, without power, you can't do anything. So uh, on the back of the camera, you'll see here there's this little gap for, for a uh, battery. You have a battery about yay big. This is a large battery, probably lasts you about three and a half hours or so. And if you uh, press, I don't know if you can see it there, but uh, you can see the status um, of the battery life. And this one is full. So basically to insert the battery, it goes in straight and then slide to the left so you hear that click and you're good to go. Uh, while we're on the back of the camera, to turn the camera on, you'll see this little button here that is marked uh, camera. It's a little green button. You slide that over to camera and that powers the camera on. Uh, right above here, tilt the camera like this. Right underneath the microphone is the LCD screen that opens up and flips. So now we can see that the camera is on. And that's pretty basic, uh, powering up the camera. So now I'm gonna show you how to insert a memory card into the EX-1 camera. Uh, this is a 16 gigabyte memory card, S by S card. It holds about 54 minutes of HD footage. We also have 64 gigabyte cards available that hold up to four hours of uh, HD footage. Okay, so on the left side of the camera, you'll see the S by S door. Uh, you slide it open like so. Memory card goes in. It only goes in one way, so if it's not going in, flip it around and do it the other way. Press it in, a little red light comes on for a second, then it turns green, which means that you're good to go. Uh, you can also insert a second card um, in the slot B. Um, if you wanted to record even more footage, you can hold up to uh, eight hours at that point of HD footage. So close the door and now we're ready to record. Um, you can also select which slot you'd like to begin on by pressing slot select. In this case, we only have one, so we won't be selecting any more than just the one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do right now is since our memory card is actually full, this presents a great opportunity to show you how to clear the memory card. Now I focus the camera so you can see the LCD screen. When I press the menu button, uh, this little menu comes up and at the top of the first thing is audio. We don't need audio. With the scroll wheel on the back of the camera, I'm gonna scroll down to the others menu. And it's a very odd name for the menu because it's quite the important menu and we use it often, uh, but it's called others. Um, we're gonna select that. Now you press the, the uh, menu wheel in like a button and you can then slide down and select the subfolders inside of the others folder. Now we're looking for format media, which is right here, it's towards the bottom. When you select that, it's gonna also then show you media A or media B. Now media B is grayed out because there's no card in there. I'm gonna select media A and I'm going to choose execute. It's going to then confirm. Are you sure you wanna format media A? We're gonna hit execute again and it's gonna start formatting. It should only take maybe 10 seconds tops. Um, there, it wasn't even 10 seconds, I don't think. So now that you've got your power on and your card inserted, I'm gonna give you a quick demonstration on the buttons and their functions that are on the side of the camera. So the first thing you wanna look at um, are your settings on the camera to make sure that you don't get uh, footage that's too bright or too dark. Um, you can do that a number of different ways. First, starting here, uh, you have the option to choose manual or auto iris. I like to put it on manual, uh, gives you a little bit more control. You can also then scoot down to focus, which you can also change to manual or auto. I also put that on manual, just to make sure that I can have full control of my focus. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna put the camera on manual iris, and then now I can move the iris ring. This will actually change how much light is allowed in the camera. Um, it gives you a lot more control over your image. If you also wanna look at uh, brightness, there's these things here called ND filters. And uh, right now they're off, but you can switch them and they will change depending on which level they're on. Zebras, pressing zebras on allows you to see which areas of the um, 
shot are too bright and it allows you to then adjust your iris and as zebras disappear um, the light becomes more normal. So if there's zebras it means it's too bright and you should definitely adjust your settings. Peaking, if that's on, allows you to check which areas of your shot are in focus or out of focus. The areas that are highlighted in red are in focus. If they're not red, they are out of focus. Full auto mode allows you to turn everything on full auto, which means auto white balance, auto iris, auto focus, auto everything. Uh, full auto though is good for if you're going in and out of different light changes and, or leaving a camera stationary without anyone manning the camera. You also then have gain, which most of the time should be on low. Uh, because if your gain is up too high, your footage can look a little grainy. We spin this around to the right side of the camera, and we have our strap where we can slip our hand and make sure our grip is secure. Uh, right above that, we have our zoom in and out, and uh, right where your thumb sits is the record button. Pretty straightforward. I also have XLR inputs up, up here on this side of the camera as well. If we're looking at the camera from the front, we see the onboard mic right above the lens. The lens cap switch is right here behind the lens. Open and close. Okay, so on the right side of the camera, you have two XLR inputs, uh, channel one and channel two. Right above that, you have a little slot for a shotgun mic add-on if you'd like to add a shotgun mic up there. Now, the XLR inputs actually correspond to the back of the camera and on the back of the camera we can see the channel 1 and channel 2 which match the XLR inputs on the side that I just showed you. Um, channel 1 and channel 2 can stay on auto. Uh, manual adjustment is you know if you wanted to actually go on the side here and adjust the manual levels um, but generally if you leave it on auto you're gonna have decent audio. Um, however on the right side we have um, INT mic which stands for internal mic, and EXT, which stands for external mic. Um, internal mic is talking about the onboard camera mic, and external mic is talking about any other mic that is plugged into the camera um, that is external, like a handheld mic or a lavalier. Generally, you don't want to be using the onboard mic because it is not great audio. Um, so you want to basically leave these on uh, external and plug in an external device. Lastly, on the back, we have this little yellow DC in slot, which is a plug that allows you to plug in the actual battery charger um, to then power the camera from the wall so you don't have to use a battery. So on the LCD screen, you can see in the lower right hand corner, the audio levels that are moving. So you can see my audio uh, moving and that's actually the onboard camera mic that's picking me up right now. In the lower left hand corner, you can see that we are in 3200 Kelvin, which is the white balance adjustment. And you can adjust white balance, and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Uh, at the top, in the left-hand corner, you'll see uh, that it shows A and B, and that corresponds to the memory card slots that we talked about earlier. 54 minutes in slot A, and slot B is empty, of course. Right above that is the battery life, which is at 210 minutes. That's the large battery, um, and those will last you quite a while. In the middle, we have STBY, which stands for standby. And uh, if we press record, it actually turns to a red REC record light, which means we're now recording. Of course, we're gonna stop that, and uh, now it goes back to standby. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna show you today is called white balancing, and it's probably the most important thing you should do before you start shooting, um, because if you don't white balance correctly, your camera can end up looking a little bit um, yellow or blue, um, so basically if you look at the screen right now, you have the flowers in the shot, but everything's kind of got a blue tint to it. Um, that's because we're not properly white balanced. Uh, to properly white balance, you have to focus on something that is white. So I've turned the camera on to a white object. Now I have a poster board here that's white, but you may not always have the luxury of having a poster board out in the field. Uh, anything white will work. So if somebody has a white t-shirt on or if there's a white flag, um, whatever you can get your hands on at that point um, will work for white balancing. So the proper way to white balance on the EX-1, you want to zoom in on the object. Now you'll see that it says highlight, that just popped up on the right side of the screen there. 
Um, that just means that there's a lot of light coming in right now and the camera will not actually let you white balance until you turn the iris down. So we're gonna turn the iris down until that highlight disappears. So you see here's the camera lens and right below it towards the back on the body of the camera is this button that says WHTBAL. That is the white balance button. So when you press that, you'll see it says auto white balance adjusting. And now you can tell because you saw it change from blue to white that we're now properly white balanced. Now that you can see we're back on the flowers and Errol, the colors are vibrant and everything looks really nice and pretty. Uh, that's because we're properly white balanced now. When you white balance, you're actually telling the camera what color is white so that it can then differentiate all the other colors. Um, you do have to change your white balance every time you change uh, light settings. Um, so if it's outside or inside lighting, fluorescent lighting versus incandescent lighting, you have to change your white balance and adjust every single time you change light settings. Um, unless you're on auto white balance, then that should automatically adjust the white balance based on your location. So I hope you've enjoyed the Sony EX1 camera tutorial. If you have any questions about the camera and you'd like to reach out, please contact me at cbowden at mediahc.org. We will have more tutorials coming up. I uh, hope this has been helpful to you. We'll see you next time.